Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is ExpressJS full tutorial series and today I'm going to talk and cover some frequently asked questions that I get in the comment section. These are valid, basic and absolutely I agree that I should have covered them at first place. But since you guys asked for it, I'm going to answer all your frequently asked questions. Today no hands on practical but today we'll understand some questions which are absolutely important from your understanding perspective also from an interview or even to master the foundations right so let's get started today is the part four um, of the this particular uh, series ExpressJS series and today we'll talk about frequently asked questions so if you notice all the comment section you will find these nine frequently asked questions in the comment section right so the first question is what is an API right uh, then what are the prerequisites for learning ExpressJS? What is, is it backend? Is it front end? Etc. Etc. So I'm going to cover each of these for you in detail and I'm going to make some notes for you So that way it's clear to you absolutely clear your foundations are strong and above all you're confident in your journey of learning ExpressJS Right, so let's get started. Uh, what the first question is what is an API, right? So what is an API simple API stands for application programming interfaces right so in simple terms i can say that think think take an example that there are two people a and b right so a doesn't know uh, b's mother tongue and b doesn't know a's mother tongue right so what this means that they cannot communicate with each other right so to for these two people to communicate they need a common language or a contract right that is called as api right that's an api api is nothing but something which both these parties will understand now talking in more realistic terms in most cases you would have your ui code right and you will have your backend code here right now ui code understands html css javascript all the front end right all the front end things backend obviously will know backend um, languages or server side right Backend is nothing but server side. Server side. Now these two they don't understand each other, right? Like for example, uh, the backend code doesn't understand CSS, etc., etc., HTML. Uh, similarly, if it's a compilation thing, the UI will not understand. So what they do is they have a contract or API endpoints, right? These are also called as now see there are various names guys don't get confused some people call them APIs some call them endpoints some call them contracts right so most commonly used is API or endpoints right these are the two most common ones uh, some also call them as contracts right or since most of the APIs nowadays are in JSON format they are also called as JSON contracts between UI and backend right so when you hear these terms now you know what it means right they're all nothing but api's right so that is api is nothing but a common language which both ui and backend will understand backend will send some data ui will know how to pick up that data and how to process it right that is called as api okay so that exactly is called as um, that's an api now how does apis look right now take off example like this right if you open Google Maps API or Twitter API, you'll see something called twitter.com slash um, like you'll see something like API or Facebook, right? So these are publicly exposed um, APIs, which means api.twitter.com slash get tweets, right? Or so they, there's nothing but these are exposing the endpoint through which you can get these details, right? Now, similarly for Google, you have Google Maps API, you have Facebook Maps API, etc., cetera, et cetera, Facebook API. So there are different APIs. Now they have made it public, right? So APIs are of two type. Now public and private, right? Public means like Google Maps, right? Or Twitter API, right? So which means you can plug these APIs into your application, right? We can plug these into our applications. Right? So you want to build some app on top of Facebook, you can do that. You want to build a new app on top of Twitter API, you can do that, etc. Right? So you get the idea that public APIs means which are publicly exposed, right? Publicly exposed and uh, anybody can use it. Anyone 
anyone with valid credentials can use it right so what it means is you have to register and you can get the data similarly you can have with or without right because if you go to weather api right weather weather api so there you don't have to register you can directly use it right so this is not no need of registration right so no need of registration for these two registration is required so that's how so so this is how it would be public apis now private means whatever you will build for your company or your client right so for example let's say uh, some company xyz.com right so you will develop some apis and you it will all be get users right etc so these are all endpoints which are protected right protected you can also call them private or protected ones protected because it will require certain uh, certain specific username passwords etc right so which means that they are private or protected that means these endpoints you cannot access right we cannot access them over internet freely right you need um, you need some kind of username passwords to access them right so that is that is a brief um, explanation of what an api is right now how do we relate it to what we are going to build in express right so if you see in the last example hello world example right i opened a browser and then i typed http localhost right 3000 slash get users i typed this in the previous example refer it if you have missed it right previous episode refer previous episode so this is a url right it's a url like just like this now my endpoint name is get so an endpoint is nothing but endpoint or api will have an endpoint name in this case the name is get users right and api will be pointing to a particular port right in this case it is 3000 now even this when we say google api twitter api they also have some port configured they are not exposing it right so you'll have a port and then finally you'll have domain name right so these are the three things that and also sometimes you also have to mention http or https right the difference is http is non secure http is secured so anything like credit card processing or username passwords should all be https right so that's a secured one remember that so this is what makes an endpoint right so we created an endpoint by the name localhost 3000 get users right i hope the concept of api is clear if you have any doubts drop them in the comment section i'll be happy to help you let's take a look at the next one what are the prerequisites for learning express js right so there are no prerequisites right there are no prerequisites for learning express js right it however that being said right it will help you it will help you right if you know javascript node js right uh, yeah basics of programming right programming fundamentals if you have um, you will be able to it will help you but it is absolutely not necessary that you should know it okay the next question is is it back end or front end framework right so express js is like node js right node js is nothing but server side scripting right using javascript right it's a runtime environment so express is built on top of node which means that it is javascript right so it is running in your server side which means express js is a back end framework okay back end means it's on the server that's all right it's not client side it is server side server side means it has to need it will need a server where you'll have to host it like a server right it will build it now the next is is it necessary to learn node.js before learning express again no it's not mandatory it's not mandatory to learn node.js right before express yes right but like i said however uh, since like i said node.js is nothing but javascript right right is javascript which means again it goes to the same point here 
that it will help you if you know JavaScript, it will help you if you know Node.js, it will help you if you know programming fundamentals, right? So there is nothing wrong in learning, but how saying that you have to learn Node before Express is also wrong. You can learn directly Express.js, you can work hard, you can spend time and you can master it, okay? Then what's the relationship between Node.js and Express.js, right? So this is an interesting question often asked in interviews also. So like I said, so if you see uh, the Node.js, right? Um, like I said, Node.js is server side, right? Server side scripting. Now Express.js is built on top of it, right? Built on top of it, which means that if you, if you look at this, right? Uh, See, if you look at a piece of code in Node, let's say, for example, you have to do something like HTTP create server and then start the port, run everything, etc. in Node. But in, in Express, it's nothing like that, right? It's an app. So we can directly write app.get. So you see, this is easily connecting route and you can just say app.listen and you are starting the port, right? So basically, it is doing all the heavy weight lifting for you, right? So Express.js makes it easy to code at high level and using Node, it is like going low level, right? Using Node is like uh, going low level programming, low level fundamental, uh, fundamental programming, okay? So you can avoid it. Express makes it easy for you. That's what I would say the difference. What is Postman tool, right? Now, Postman is an important tool. Um, all, I would say 95% of the world applications, right, use Postman tool, uh, not applications, I would say companies, or I would say um, Fortune um, 500, right? 95% of the world come Fortune 500. And that's not what I am saying, their website says it, okay? <laughs> so don't quote me on that. All right, so use Postman tool um, for testing APIs, right? Um, so we have seen how to write an API and all of this, right? So how do you test it? So we test it using Postman tool, right? So it's free, it's free, free distribution, right? Which means you don't have to pay anything. And it's really powerful, um, powerful tool, um, tool and we can, and we can do a lot of things, a lot of things for testing APIs. We'll see that um, in the next tutorial, right? Next tutorial is dedicated to Postman tool, okay? So stay tuned for that. All right, so how do you test API? So we will use the tool Postman, right? We'll use the Postman tool for testing APIs. Um, there are other tools, SOAP, um, other things, but I have worked with Postman and I can explain you that. And like I said, it's a powerful tool. Most of the people use it, it's free. And I will teach you that in the next episode. How many days it will take to learn Express.js? I would, I am planning to complete all of this in 15 days uh, course. This is a, um, yeah, this is a 15 day course. The 15 day course. Um, I will try and complete, um, try and complete all aspects of Express.js. ASAP, okay? And then we will we do a practical project? Yes, we will do a practical um, aspect of project also. Not maybe full-fledged, but at least few APIs. Um, few APIs, we will definitely, we will do a live project, okay? it's It would be interesting uh, to do that. So that's how you learn. Without that, you don't learn. Right, so I hope this is helpful to you. I hope I have answered all your questions. If you have any more questions, drop them in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer you. Okay, in the next episode, we'll cover Postman tool, but if you like this video and are happy with this, if you're learning and if you want to keep uh, encouraging me, you can buy me a coffee at HTTPS, buymeacoffee.com slash arc tutorials. I'll appreciate you your help in supporting me through this channel. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you in the next episode where we will learn about the Postman tool for API testing. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. Stay safe, friends. Bye.